All right. We're going to have to speed it up a little bit tonight. What? All right. What number am I on? 17. 17? What's it? What'd you say? I don't like you. Let's jump over to power factors. Power factors. All right. We have a couple of different types of power used to describe. I wrote two here, but there's really kind of three. But we'll just go with my notes. and I don't know why I wrote that. There are two types. Two types of power used to describe work in an AC circuit. <clears throat> this one is true power, which is in watts, watts. It is, it is the actual, the actual amount of power consumed, the actual amount Power consumed. Consumed. C -M -C -M. Consumed. Uh, oh, by resistance. By resistance. <clears throat> and I have not taking in, not accounting for or not factoring in, I should say, um, inductance or capacitance. So we'll call it X of L or X of C. That was a faster way of writing it. All right, we're doing good. <clears throat> so it's measured in watts. Say that again, measured or expressed. I like expressed better, not really measured. Expressed in watts. Uh, symbol is P, you know that? Symbol is P. Um, and it is P total equals I squared R. I'm going to go through these a little quick. I'm not going to belabor them too much. Apparent power. Apparent power, which is Power consumed by the entire circuit, so it, it is the power consumed by the entire circuit, which accounts, which considers a resistance and reactance by the entire circuit. So that is resistance and reactance. So in other words, it's a function of Z. I could put that here, function of Z. Function of Z, and Z is yeah. impedance. It is a product of, of volts and amps, volts and amps, amps, without reference to phase angle. To phase angle. In other words, multiply the measured volts times the measured amps. So you'd say it's V RMS times A RMS. Most of this should be sounding sort of familiar. Apparent 
power. Parent power. Or P apparent, APP, equals I squared Z. Times times volts RMS times amps RMX equals just like we have before. I just don't think my finger is still an R. We got to write it correctly. Um, let's see. We'll always will always be more than true power. Be more than true power. True power in a circuit with impedance. With and it is expressed, expressed as volt amps. Say it again. Why is it watts and they're kind of in the same? I know. Somebody decided this a long time ago. Why? Why even hold that? I'm glad they called the other one watts, kind of. I mean, let me think about that one. Yeah. yeah. So that one is I square R. Yeah. <laughs> Just the way they decided it. I don't always know. All right. Volt amps. Then we have the power factor, which is not the same, it is different. So we have power factor. I like this one. Power factor. It is the ratio, the ratio of the last two things we just talked about. True power to apparent power. True power to apparent power. That's going to give us our power factor. So we have power factor, PF, power factor equals true power divided by apparent power. <clears throat> answer, the answer. If you did it right will be a number, will be a number between zero and one. Between zero and one. <clears throat> one equals purely resistive circuit. And say two, uh, zero <laughs> equals purely reactive. Purely active. So the lower the number, the larger the phase shift, the lower the number, we'll have the larger the phase shift, larger the phase shift, I'll say will be, will be, and the lower the efficiency. Only X of L, X of C, no R. The opposite of purely resistive, which is no X of L, no X of C. So I will let you guys get caught up. And once you are caught up, here's my suggestion, is we're done. Finished. Mic drop. Mic drop. 
No, I, it's my purse. I buy this stuff. Don't do. Don't drop my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Switching gears. Well, that was fifth gear. Now we got to go to sixth gear. Oh man. So we have to speed it up a little bit now. All right. What I suggest you do. Now we're gonna put it into practice. All right. This is the fun part. Now we're just gonna put it all together. All right. And I want to make sure I can go nice and slow on this part, which is not always easy for me. So solving these problems is very different than solving. The, uh, the series problems we had, where I could draw or a parallel problem, where I would put a bunch of resistors on the board and I would give you, oh, maybe voltage over here, maybe a resistance over here, you know, and an amps over here, and you gotta kinda look at it and go, all right, what, uh, what do I got here? What do I gotta, this was very different. It really, you're just given the information and you look and you just go down a list. And you just, okay, I'm going to do this next, this, this, this. One, two, it's step by step by step, and the steps don't change. So it makes it much easier, if you ask me. This is a lot, it's, it's actually easier than doing the DC stuff we've done in the past. It's just longer. But with the DC stuff, like I said, you really have to think about it, and you kind of have to really understand Kirchhoff's laws and Ohm's law. Well, some of you, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> we've forgotten. Um, you have to understand it. This, not so much, right? It's just more of a step-by-step. -step. So I say get out a, a, a piece of paper and you're going to set it to the side and that's going to be your formula paper. And you're going to write down all the formulas that you're going to want kind of in the order that you're going to use them. And I'll try and go in the order that you should use it. And then we'll, we'll work one of these together. Now the problem with, with working it on what I've got here. Again, I'm very restricted. Usually I use both boards and jump around and I'm writing all kinds of stuff. And uh, so, but that makes it difficult to put in a recording. So you may have to have several pieces of paper that I can go back and forth and reference. So the problem we're going to work and all of the problems are, are going to look very similar to this. So I don't necessarily have to draw it but one time if you want to draw it. So we're going to have a power source. We are going to have a resistor, or that represents our total if you want. You're only going to get one resistor. We're going to get a coil. You get a capacitor, and that's it. Now we could label it E, I, and R. E, I, R. E, I, R. E-I-R, but it's going to be different. So now you're going to get the, the values. <clears throat> so values are going to be, for this particular one, we'll work first. We'll say it's 440 volts. The frequency is 60 hertz. That's HZ. Um, the resistance here, 500 ohms. We are going to have a coil of 3.5 Henry's and a capacitance, and this is what's going to screw a lot of you up, of 12, what is that? Microfarads, micro okay, microfarads. Uh, all right, so we have all of that. I want to make sure I go nice and slow. All right, everybody good? Um, you know, actually, in my little notes, I have it written as 12 UFD. So, but yes, so I just kind of <laughs> remembered as I'm writing it, well, it should be a big F, and I thought, I don't know, for some reason, I'll throw the D in, so. So if you see, like, UFD, please note what I meant by that. So we'll just call it big F. There we go. Okay, ready? Where do we start? What's that? XFL. XFL. He's correct. So if I had a lot of, maybe I put three or four coils in here, you would have to add them. And I could have done that. I could have put uh, 
two coils in there, one with 1.5, one with two Henry's. How do you do coils in a series circuit? Add them together, Add them together like resistors. Okay, so we want to figure out, so on your piece of paper, I will put one, you know, your first formula is I want to know X of L. So X of L equals two pi F L. So X of L is X of L equals two times pi times the frequency, which is 60 times the L, which is, I guess I'm by myself on this one, 3.5, okay. What do you got? So X of L equals, I heard 13, 19 point. Okay, be careful with your rounding. Five is absolutely correct. Um, we can go five. We can go a little bit more if you want. Uh, it's helpful. So I'm gonna go three decimal places, four, six, nine. Hey, am I done with XL? No, because if you wrote that on your test, you would get it? Wrong. Because it is ohms. ohms. Otherwise, I don't know if you're talking volts, amps, whatever. Okay, so, so far that was pretty easy, right? Yeah. Doesn't get much harder. Okay, number two. What do I want to get? X of C. X of C equals one over two pi F, C. All right, so I work that. X of C equals one over two pi, the frequency times the capacitance. What is that again? 3.5, thanks. No, it's not. That is not correct. 12 times 10 to the negative 6. 12 times, very good, 10 to the negative 6. So this is where I would get good at using that EE key on there. I would not try and I would not try and uh, write it next to it. Go, okay, that's point zero zero, and count the zeros. What you know, you're just asking for problems because if you mess up here, the rest of the problem will be wrong, and you'll get a, and you'll get it all wrong. It's all it builds. So two times and hit the pi key. Pi times sixty times twelve second EE negative six equals x minus one equals what do you guys get there say it a little bit louder very nice ohms if anybody needs help now's the time to say something all right so two times five times 60. Times, now times okay. 12 second EE, yep, negative <clears throat> 6 equals. Now I hit 1 minus x minus 1 equals. Look at you. You're a pro. Oh. Hey, math genius right there, I tell Okay, we ready for the next one? How do, how do we get that? Two, Two times, pi. times pi times 60 times 12 second.
Okay. You can at this point solve for x total. It adds another step, but we can do it, which is simply 1319.469 minus 221.049. So x total equals. Yep. And what do you guys get? If I did it right. Yeah? Okay. That is an extra step. So if somebody asks for x of t, which I don't think I do, you could do that. I prefer to go right to the next step, which is finding z. So I want z. And so z, remember, that is the hypotenuse. So it's that hypotenuse formula, which would be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. OK, so it looks a little different when it's written out this way, but I prefer it this way. So r squared, so that's like the a squared. If you remember, b squared is just x of t. So you can put that in, or you can do plus x of l minus x of c squared. It's just one step. Or you could plug in z, sorry, that's z equals, z equals r squared plus x t, which you already have. So you can do it either which way. Do you follow that? OK. x t squared, right? Yeah. So I think I'm going to go with the top one right there. So I will say z equals r squared. So what is my r? Okay, 500 squared plus, well, we already have xt, but what the heck. Plus 1319.469 minus 221.049, all that squared. So I'm going to keep that, keep that going there. So I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to say 500. Now, you can plug this all into your calculator. Um, sometimes I like to write it out a little bit so I can see it. So we can do long way to be 500. And I use that little hat symbol with 2. So 250,000, so 000, uh, plus 1319.469. 0.469 minus 221.049 equals, square that equals 1206526.496 plus 250123 equals, and I want the square root of that. So it's second, the square root button, second answer close parentheses equals, what do you guys get? 6.866. Thank you. Um, let me think here.
I was trying to do it all in one linear thing on your calculator, which if you, you just have to remember to get the parentheses in the right spot, and you're gonna have to put two on the beginning, right? So second, and you have to go parentheses 500 squared um, plus parentheses one three one nine point four six nine minus 221.049 squared, close parentheses. Oops, I screwed up. I know I did. Let me see. Yep. You don't need two parentheses in the beginning. It already gives you one, but you need to have uh, one after the squared. Yeah. Yeah. Equals. Um, I did it that way. Oh, it didn't come out right. It did come out right. Oh. That's so, true. so if you're if you want to know if you want to do it on your calculator in one long shot, you're gonna hit the second square root key, and so you're gonna do that, and it's gonna come up like this on your calculator. I put another parentheses and go 500 squared and close the parentheses plus parentheses 1319.469 minus 221.049 and then you have to do that close parentheses and square that otherwise it's just going to square the 221049 then close the parentheses and that will give you the right answer but if you want to do it all in one shot you can do that and that's going to be your best best shot 12068866 and that's what I got so now we've got X of L, X of C, and Z. All right, that was not hard, was it? <clears throat> okay. Now we want to solve for I. So what number am I at? One, two, three, wow. four, five. I want to solve for I. So the formula for I is, or I total, I should say, I total equals E divided by Z. So E, what is my E? 400 and 440 divided by Z, 1206.866. What do you get? 0.365. Three six five amps. amps. There we go. Okay. So if I was going to come on to my little drawing here, well, this right here is four hundred and forty volts. Point three six five amps. All right, we got that going for us. Our total. Well, we could call it Z actually. Z would be better. We already have that. 1206, just to be brief, 1206.8 something or another, I forget. All right, we're looking good there. Oh, S still Ohm's Law, point, or Kirchhoff's amps, <coughs> 0.365 amps, 0.365 amps. That was easy. All right. So I total, let me see, what do we want next? Four or five, we'll do number, the sixth thing we'll do. Sixth thing we'll do is solve for E of R, E of L, and E of C. So E of R, this might blow your mind, E of R equals I times R. <laughs> so. 0.365 times 500. So E of R is 182. 182. 182. Point, I just get five. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Volts. All right. Um, e of R. E of L is I. I times X of L. So E right here, 
where we had e before, it really becomes x of l. So I, I'll write that down here. Oops, sorry. E of l equals I times x of l. Because you wouldn't want to do Henry's. Oops, I just did something stupid, but I'll tell you what it is here. Does XL go right there? No, that was not right. Why is that not right? X of L is resistance. I know. X of L. Is that liquid lunch catching me up? All right. X of L. Oops, so I solve for it. What is it? X of L is. What's my XL? 1319.469. 1319.469 times 0.365 equals. What do you get? 41.606 voltages. Got it. What do you think's next? God, man, you guys are fast. X of C equals I times X of C times resistance. Remember, we're doing, see, notice the, the theme here. Resistance, the resistance, the resistance. X of C equals I times X of C. It's E of C equals. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Oh. Sometimes it's amazing how you guys will miss every point in the world I make, but boy, if I write one letter wrong, it's like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, where am I going to put my X of C right here? Is it the E, the I, or the R? So I'm holding it over there. So, all right, so. X of C. And X of C was like two, I guess I can't really go by memory. 221. 221.049. Okay. So X of C becomes, or so E of C becomes 80.683. Wow, we did it. All we got to do is verify it. Well, we're not done yet. We still got to go. So. Let me see. So we got 440 volts. Kirchhoff's law says the voltage drop across each should equal that. So I got 182 plus 481 plus 80 should equal. Oh crap. What do you suppose we messed up? Nothing. That's the way it's going to be. It's really weird that way, isn't it? Because remember, it's. How uh, do I want to say this? That is the way it is going to come out. And it is because you're talking about phase shifts, things happening at different times. So now we're not talking about the same time. And um, apparent power, you know, true power, it all comes into play where these don't line up. They're not going to. So if you work it until it lines up, you done messed up. Hey, Ron. So that is the way it is going to look. So what is next? We're not done yet by a long shot. Now it's going to start to get fun. All right, what do we want? Number seven. Solve for power. Five, six. We can put seven over here on the side. Seven. All right, solve for power. Solve for power. So I want power true. Power true is going to equal I squared times R. So 0.365 squared times R, which was 500. So power true will equal, I ain't writing it down until you tell me. 
six one three what watch everybody with me I didn't lose anybody did I eight solve four oh, I could have just wrote this power apparent power apparent all right so that is volt amps equals I squared times Z so remember before it was times R just the resistance part now it's the whole thing so apparently this is what the power is so it is I squared 0.365 squared times Z which is the number I don't have in front of me uh, 1206.866 so that equals power Parent equals. I hear a little voice in the back. Five volt amps. Volt amps. Everybody with me so far? I'm out of paper. It's too late. <laughs> Well, I've got room right here. So nine, I want the power factor. Power factor, which is power true divided by power apparent. And so the power factor is going to equal power true 66.613 divided by 160.785. And my power factor will equal point four one four. There we go. That's just a number. So is it? Remember, zero is more reactive. One is more resistive. Is it reactive, resistant? So zero is reactive, so I'd say it's less more reactive. More reactive. Yeah. We could look at that. We could say well, our x x total is is in fact higher than our our resistance. So it'd be another way of looking at it. Going, yeah, I can I can buy that. Can I move this now? Well, yeah. What's the unit for that for power factor? Yeah. It's a ratio. It's a, it's just a ratio. Uh -huh. Yeah? yeah? Move? You're going to be lost on Monday? What? What would you say about Monday? I'm always lost Monday. Well, today's not Monday, so there's part of your problem. Okay, right. now we need to solve for the phase angle. What number is this? 10. 10. Phase angle. Probably the hardest part, but also, I don't know, the, the, the fun part. So we have the, the chart that I draw, right? And so we have the X of L going up, the X of C going down, but we know is X total is a positive number. So that means it's more X of L. Or we can go back and look at it. We had an X of L number and an X of C number. Which one was bigger? X of L, okay, but we're not going to put just the total X of L or just the total X of C. We've got to put, and then, I'm sorry, we got to put the right number there. And then we had our resistance. How much was our resistance? Okay, 500. And now we've got to figure out here which our X of L, X of C, that is our X total, which we did get, thankfully. So X total is... 1319, right? 0.469, was that it? No, 1098.42. Uh oh. Sure about that? 
Uh, yeah, X total. I'm sorry, it was. It was 1098, right? Yes. 1098 point what? 42. 42. Okay. 1098. Everybody see where I'm at right now? Because I, okay. So what we're doing is we now have a triangle that really looks like this. This is 500, not to scale, 1098.42. And if we said, if, if we're in uh, you know, geometry class, I guess it is, then this is you know, inches or centimeters or whatever. We need to, and we already know Z, by the way. So this is Z, forgot, we already know Z. What is Z? Twelve oh six point eight six six. All right. So there's our triangle. All we have to do is figure out what is this angle right here. Okay. So we've got the triangle. That was easy. And now we're gonna have to figure out how to find that angle. And so you get to make a choice. And I don't care. You can use the arc sine, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. You can use cosine which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Or you can use tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Does not matter what you do. So in other words, if you, and it's, by the way, it's going to be arc tangent, arc cosine, and arc, uh, sine, arc, the arc functions, sorry. OK, so if you wanted to use the sine key on your calculator, we're going to be going from this point. What is the opposite? What number is that? OK, remember that. The opposite is all the way over here. It's the opposite side. So that is 1098.42 divided by the hypotenuse, 1206.866. Um, or we could use the cosine function, which is the um, adjacent, which is 500, divided by the hypotenuse, 1206.866. Or you can use tangent, which is the opposite, which is 1098.42, divided by the adjacent, 500. So take your pick. Oh, yeah, 65.53 degrees. So everybody, if you don't have the blue calculator or this one, it worked a little bit different. So that's why it took me a second to remember how to use this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 1098.42 divided by 1206.866 equals. Now I get a number. And you should have that number right there is like 0.910 on and on and on. Okay, you got that? Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the second key and the sine key. Is that for these calculators? Or? Uh, it's this one. Okay. Second cool. sine key. And what you should see when that happens on your calculator right now, it says sine minus one. Okay, hit the second key and uh, the, that key. Because it's the, it says answer, so it's second answer, and then close those parentheses, equals, and you get six five point five three. Or we could do. Let's see, five hundred divided by one two zero oh, six point eight six six equals, and then second cosine second answer close parentheses equals 65.53 or opposite adjacent which i know will work out too so it does not matter you can choose any one of those yeah you can also just start with hitting sine cosine tangent and then do 
Oh, yeah, that's right. You could because it's going to put that in parentheses. So that would be like, that would be a little faster. So it would be sine. Oops. I'm just not used to these fancy calculators. So it would be sine. No. We would do a second. Second key. Uh, sine. And then it's going to give you the parentheses already. Then you can put, um, well, I can't see it now. One oh nine eight point four two divided by one two oh six point eight six six. Close the parentheses, equals, and you should get the answer. Thanks. All right, you have one question left, and you are done. Is this circuit in... Nope, don't worry about it. Is this circuit inductive, capacitive, or resistive? Is it inductive, capacitive, or resistive? It is not all three. Uh, there we go. Is it resistive, inductive, or capacitive? Inductive. Which one is more? There's no way of saying it. Which one is more? All right. My notes say solving RCL parallel only if time allows because it's not part of the FA testing. So we'll not worry about it. But really, I will tell you this, to solve for um, this in parallel is, is really almost the same thing. You just change a few, a Z is a little bit different and there's a few other minor nuances. Once you get the formulas, it's just plugged in. It's, it's the same dang thing. Okay. I told you. Um, 